Yeah, so uh, good evening, everyone. This is uh, a very popular topic, I believe, because uh, we received a lot of requests uh, asking for this topic to be discussed. Uh, and I completely understand being an IVF consultant as to why this topic uh, is uh, being asked by so many. Uh, we see varied uh, scenarios wherein we see AMH being 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and uh, uh, patients wasting time in peripheries or even in uh, metros. And when they come, there is hardly any ovarian reserve. Or, I mean, there is enough and more and still people are uh, referred directly for IVF without uh, actually doing any much uh, anything much in their uh, setup. So I hope this uh, session gives you uh, clarity as to what to do when and when to refer, when you can really take that, uh, put that effort to treat that couple, because this is a little dicey. Some are very brave and very adventurous to try everything and anything. Some are very scared to even put uh, CC when, see, when they see a MH below one. So uh, over to you, Dr. Jai, to start the session. Okay, I'll share my screen and uh, I'm going to draw the, I'm going to draw the thing which I have, okay, for my nurses here. So, uh, this, this will really benefit, okay, I think, all right. And uh, this session will otherwise also finish very fast because uh, <clears throat> low AMH, no, is uh, something, as I said, I have said many, many times, I will really like it, okay. So what we are going to be discussing, see, this is one of the, the most commonest, Shilpa Madam, I'm audible, right? So yes, this yes. is the most commonest referral which I get in my practice because I'm a non-donor clinic. Okay. And uh, low AMH and I'll just write down without IVF. Okay. So uh, first, let me just define what is our criteria for telling that somebody is low AMH. Okay. So our criteria for low AMH is any AMH value, which is less than 1.2, any antral follicle count, which is less than 5. Okay. Now, antral follicle count is obviously both the ovaries. We are not looking at any other markers. We are not looking at FSH. We are not looking at estradiol. We are not looking at LH. We are not looking at any other thing. Okay. This is it. This is what we look at. We are not even looking at ovarian volume. All right. So what we have done is we have divided this low AMH category patient without IVF. Okay. Into two separate departments. Okay. If the age of the patient, now I know what I'm going to be speaking is slightly unconventional. People who want to follow can really follow. The ones who don't want to follow, obviously I leave it to their fine sense of wisdom. Okay. Age less than 33. Age more than 33. I know somebody is going to ask me why on earth did this number 33 come and why it is not 32 and why it is not 31. This is just out of my practical experience. As I am mentioning again, you are free to follow. You are absolutely not free to follow. It's completely your call. Okay. This is what I have. This is what I have given instructions to the nurses. There is a chart of this in the hospital. Okay. And the reason why we have divided this age and taken it as 33 is because in India, low AMH tends to become very low much faster. Okay. And Indian low AMH is really low AMH. Okay. So the first thing which we want to look in this entire chart for our patient is that what are the inclusion criteria? Okay. To treat them, to treat them naturally. That means without IVF. So when I say without IVF, I include IUIs here. So what is this category going to include? This is the category which is going to include patients who desire to have natural intercourse pregnancies as well as IUI pregnancies. All right. Both of them are included. So what are our inclusion criteria? It is the same for both the categories, which is both the tubes should be patterned. Okay. So both the fallopian tubes are patterned. That is the first criteria. Second criteria is that Husband semen analysis should be normal. All right. Third criteria is that the husband DNA fragmentation index should be less than 25%. All right. Fourth criteria, and this is a, you know, uh, you can choose and you cannot choose. Okay. Is we include 
everyone who wishes to be that means if even if you have had a failed ivf in the past okay we will include you as long as you want to do it without ivf even if you have had multiple failed iui cycles we will include you in this category okay and there is one very important criteria this is the most important maximum we allow is four cycles and after that the patient will go to icsi program okay with dual st Okay. this is important that is why i am just writing it separately okay the, so these are our honestly our inclusion criteria we follow this inclusion criteria very strictly and then i will just discuss because see this is already the inclusion criteria amh and antral follicle count is already inclusion criteria the reason why we have divided it based on age is because age is the most important thing which you need to understand now there is something some logic which everybody needs to understand and of course i'll just write down what is the protocol so what is our protocol of choice okay for age less than 33 first preference is extended letrozole okay which is given as 2.5 mg twice in a day and this this is our protocol number 1 protocol number 2 is our low dose hcg protocol and protocol number 3 is letrozole plus 150 international units of hmg letrozole is 2.5 for 7 days i will come to why why 7 days i will come to why letrozole plus hmg in age more than 33 protocol is relatively simple almost every patient will be getting letrozole 2.5 mg Plus one hundred and fifty international units of HMG for seven days. That is the protocol of choice. Second protocol of choice is low dose HCG. Okay. Now please understand this. Whenever you are talking of low AMH patients, no, what are we trying to recruit? Patient has only five follicles. We are trying to recruit out of this five. We are trying to recruit. Let's say our target is three. Our that is our target between two to three follicles, almost always. okay so whenever we want to recruit this please remember these are the follicles which have a high threshold of recruitment okay that is because of their low amh all right it is an inherent problem of low amh they have a little high threshold of recruitment second please understand all these natural cycles and iui cycles which you are going to attempt in all these patients are going to be mimicking your fresh transfer cycles that means you need to ensure that in this particular cycle itself the endometrium and embryo are synchronous to each other now people will ask you jay why did you say two to three follicles so please understand when people have low amh okay you require more number of follicles or you require more number of oocytes in low amh patients in order to get euploid embryos see nature is very powerful only when you have euploid embryos which are produced there is going to be implantation nature doesn't really listen to emotions so this euploid embryos to produce definitely you are going to require much more effort in low amh patients especially in this category low amh with age more than 33 and as a result of which we have letrozole plus 150 international unit for 7 day wala protocol now why this 7 days why should why should anybody have a protocol uh, you know which requires 7 days of anything okay why not just 5 days see the reason why you require 7 days of this particular uh, this particular thing is because there are multiple occasions where in just 5 days or just in 6 days what will happen is the follicle will reach a size of around 14 mm now after it reaches a size of 14 mm you need this additional 2 days to go inside okay this additional 2 days will ensure this 14 to become 18 to 19 to 20 mm otherwise you may have a little arrest or a little poor quality oocyte okay that is exactly what you do in a fresh cycle right you give the stimulation till the day of trigger okay now as i have discussed many many times just in case you have a follicle which is leading an endometrium which is lagging 
even in this protocol even with low amh you can supplement it with half dose antagonist we have taken a master class on it please go through it all right fine what should be your trigger irrespective of what anyone says answer is very very simple hcg 10000 international units all the protocols here will have hcg 10000 international units all the protocols here will have hcg 10000 international units no questions what should be your luteal phase support should you give no luteal phase support absolutely rubbish you give pro progesterone gel 8% 101 protein this all right you need to start the gel approximately the next day matlab the alternate day so if i give the today saturday if i have given trigger on saturday gel to be started from monday irrespective of checking for rupture irrespective of iui irrespective of natural intercourse okay another important thing which i counsel because my nurses would counsel this and my nurses would take their signatures what is the success rate that you convey to these patients okay so what we have done is we have made it very simplified here we are going to always say 10 to 15% here we will always say 7 to 10% okay and this is very very important for us patients really trust us because patients trust us for being so dead honest with all of them and this is one of the most important things which you need to clarify to your patient as far as low amh stimulation is concerned please remember whenever you are doing low amh stimulation i again reiterate this rule out of these five guys try to stimulate two or three do not be under that impression that one which you stimulate is going to be the most optimal it can also happen that the one which you wanting to stimulate is going to be sub optimal that one which you wanting to stimulate is going to have an empty follicle as well because in low amh you must recruit everybody in your thing because you want an outcome out of it okay it is not going to be like a routine amh patient well god will recruit the healthiest person out of the lot in low amh all those things don't really matter don't don't really uh, you know affect okay why did i say extended letrozole for age less than 33 the reason being even with extend one you need extended letrozole because of the recruitment okay because you want to ensure recruitment second even with extended letrozole you can easily get approximately two good follicles in most of the situations okay so keep it keep that in mind it is not that extended letrozole will give you one extended letrozole can also give you two i do understand people say that when you have given letrozole for 10 days it will affect the endometrium but uh, till up to 10 days in low amh it doesn't really make any difference as far as practical aspects are concerned okay so that is just one more thing which i wanted all the people to understand and with that i just finish the diagrammatic explanation of the exact flow chart i have in my hospital i know i am not growing by the standard age criteria of 35 so please don't tell me that it is not standard i know it all right okay but this is a typical subset for indian women as i have said before i am telling again and people who do more of low amh and don't do the donor program like us will 100% agree to me that indian women tend to have a low amh faster and indian low amh is a very low amh as compared to any other women okay so with this i finish uh, thank you for listening and i think we can answer five to seven questions whatever shilpa madam would ask okay so uh, i will just quickly uh, want you to answer this so how frequent do you repeat amh is it once in a year once in six months low amh should be once in six months otherwise there are going to be see practical scenario what happens is if if the patient has been treated outside for whatever reason okay if they are doing a particular protocol with you they would want to undergo a series of investigations as fresh investigations right so in that fresh investigations it would get repeated in my hospital honestly okay so in lo in these uh, kind of cases do you start your follicular monitoring a little early or uh, it's the so same? i said 7 days madam R remember that i have written down letrozole plus hmg 150 international unit for 7 days on the 8th day patient comes for follicle monitoring need arises half dose antagonist is given need arises one extra day is given and believe me they will be that 17 18 19 mm on that 8th day okay try it i will share photos of we have daily two patients who become pregnant with this because we do a lot of these cycles and i can share photos from tomorrow if somebody wants to see no problem 
So what has your experience been with the uh, uh, risk of miscarriage in these in these cases? Yeah, yeah, that's important. Risk of miscarriage is higher with monofollicular stimulation in low AMH because, as I said, you don't really know what is the great oocyte which has been recruited. Risk of miscarriage would drop down drastically with this protocol because the, when you do an HCG with two or three follicles which are stimulated and a patient has conceived, just look at what HCG happens on 14 days. Okay, when when you are when that urine pregnancy test comes positive, your HCG is going to be 927, uh, 1350, something like that. See, once you have two good oocytes which have come inside the fallopian tube, nature will auto select. Uh, that PGTA will auto occur in that fallopian tube. Okay, God will do that PGTA for you. Understanding. And God will cause implantation. So trust that. Okay, so uh, see, you have a chronological age, you have uh, a reproductive aging or a biological yeah. age. So the response of these gonadotrophins, I mean, is it on chronological age or is it on the biological age that uh, you see which is more relevant according to you? Age of the patient, the biological, the biological age of the patient. I mean, that's more important, right? See, if we see yeah. a patient who is 23 year old with an AMH of 0.8, and if you see a patient with 34 years of age with the uh, AMH of 0.8, so even though the AMH are the same, but you, what, what would you expect uh, differently in these two cases? The 34 year old might require more number of cycles to conceive because she will require more time to produce that one euploid embryo as compared to the 24 year old. So what other So I want to answer I want to answer sorry I want to answer one question people often have this gross misconception that on 8th and 9th day the endometrium will not be in synchrony with the follicles okay that's absolutely rubbish the reason why it is absolutely rubbish is because the endometrial development is decided by the oocytes response and stimulation of estrogen Okay, it is not decided by the day of menstrual cycle. As a result of this, you have so many patients with low AMH who have become pregnant naturally and have come to you for a routine ANC when their cycle length was just 23 and 24 days. Understanding? So that endometrium and embryo synchrony is governed by the oocyte. So kindly take off that concept from the head. I want to add one more thing, which I do add in a lot of patients, but I have not openly told about it. The reason why uh, uh, the reason why I have not openly told about it is because it it is just something which may uh, you know it may just benefit some patients and not all patients. So there are some category of patients, especially in age more than thirty three, the second category which I mentioned, where we also add uh, pyridostigmine, okay, sixty mg twice in a day. Okay, so this pyridostigmine, everybody knows it is going to act as an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. And it will go, it will function something like a growth hormone, okay, to these follicles, okay. And one may try to do that. It is to be started from the day you stimulate the patient till the day you give your trigger, okay. But uh, it's it's not something that you can give a poor stimulation protocol and depend on pyridostigmine. It's not like that. It is just that pyridostigmine can be a small add-on and it will only benefit that second category, not so much in the young category. So what is your uh, take on steroids instead of pyridostigmine in the second set of patients? Honestly, uh, I don't use steroids Okay, uh, to any of these patients. I don't even use low-dose steroids. I don't use low-dose visolone in any of the patients unless they've had at least two previous abortions. So my, my use of uh, steroid in, in this type of practice doesn't occur and I have no practical experience of that. <laughs> Okay, apart from uh, AMH, I mean, do you consider AMH and age, which uh, I think it is uh, the two criteria, would you consider yeah. BMI and other metabolic disorders, especially in older age uh, women, to change your protocol in any ways? No, madam. One has to standardize the protocols. I have told this multiple times. And uh, see, if I'm starting five patients on this stimulation in a day, at the end of the day, I'll forget in which patient I gave 150, in which patient I gave 112.5 and in which patient I gave 225. Okay. So the best way is to standardize so that the nurses can give it nicely. Okay. And AFC below which you 
predict poor response i know you do these uh, stimulations only if, if it is less than 5 but what yeah. is where you say that no you don't want to go ahead honestly you see this these type of things the success rate which we mentioned no madam the 10 to 15 and 7 to 10% it will drop down to less than 2% if atrial follicle count is less than 2 or amh is less than 0.4 okay so that is something which you have to give it to the patient in writing and if the patient still wants to do it then one may do it otherwise uh, for those patients severe poor i mean severely low amh ivf directly is the best option mm -hmm. and what about uh, cycle cancellation rates in this uh... it will not happen when you have letrozole plus hmg combination it will happen when you use letrozole alone yeah so do you do this protocols like 1 2 3 sequentially in your practice like first cycle you do the uh, first uh, protocol that you mentioned is it sequential or is it like uh, how do you decide on that whether it is low dose hcg whether it is letrozole plus hmg or extended letrozole how do you choose those yeah so i choose it basically basically based on the affordability of the patient see at my place uh, ovulation induction for a single cycle is going to cost the patient approximately 35000 rupees okay so uh, the patients who cannot afford that there is going to be a category of patients around 10 to 15% which cannot really afford 35000 rupees every month okay so those guys are going to be shifted to the low dose hcg protocol or the extended letrozole protocol okay and that is going to be less that will finish in around 20000 rupees or something like that okay so it is purely honestly purely based on affordability of the patients and uh, very very rarely okay i will get the opportunity to do a primary extended letrozole cycle very rarely i'll get an opportunity to do primary letrozole cycle because people who will come to me uh, will have attempted some or the you know other stimulation in the past regarding letrozole and clomiphene and they would not want to repeat it isolatedly madam so that is a practical problem which i face okay so uh, what is your take on uh, starting letrozole and then adding uh, hmg from day 7 i mean would you uh, do this in this uh, set of patients no i i want more recruitment in the first 5 days i want a good dose of hp hmg with letrozole to go inside at that time so that the best two or three follicles get re recruited so you also believe in uh, the concept that the cycle manipulation can happen only from day 2 or day 3 and we can't change much after day 7 and day 8 is it like that you you can you can change after day 7 and day 8 but if you change it after day 7 and day 8 there is going to be no implantation in that cycle because you will have to give luteolytic dose of gnrh antagonist which you cannot do when a patient is trying either naturally or for iui you can do it in ivf that is routinely done for random start protocol uh, so what is your uh, thing on this uh, uh, short flare the starting from day 1 or day 2 you give uh, you don't do that Again, it will affect the endometrium it will affect the endometrium and not to do it in cycles where natural intercourse and iui is needed and what second thing sorry second thing in that micro flare protocol uh what is going to happen is your dose of gonadotropins is going to be much higher madam okay after your initial you can't really do a micro flare with 150 international units if you want to do a micro flare your minimum starting dose is 375 international units okay that may be slightly expensive i think so what is the role of uh, clomiphene citrate in this cases in uh, uh, you don't do it at all. i haven't used it since the last 6 years mm. and uh, see this low amh uh, come when there is uh, endometrioma chocolate cyst which you have operated or even yeah. without surgery so is uh, anything going to be different in such cases like say uh, ovulation or uh, if they are not very keen on uh, trying for ivf directly if the tubes are okay so but do you see that they end up in uh, problems where rupture doesn't happen no that will that will depend on the quality of the surgery which you have done and not on the disease okay so as a result of which if somebody wants to try naturally okay and uh, your tubes are good husband factor is fine kindly ensure that your disease clearances are zero you know it is absolutely optimal you can't really have a suboptimal disease clearance 
and then say that you know still some chemokines autokines parakines were secreted because the disease was left behind you really want to ensure that there is no such thing in that pelvic milieu you know and when there is nothing like that your outcomes will be much better madam okay let's talk about these adjuvants uh, what is your take on necosprin you can give i mean i honestly don't give it to all patients but one can blanket give 150 internet i mean 150 mg of ecosprin to all the patients it there is no rct which says that it is going to kill a patient okay it will really help the patient in cases where there is some help which you need right and and there is no harm in harm in giving it in my opinion i don't give but you can give standardly you one can give and elarginin and uh, uh, dhea no experience no i don't know okay so uh, this one last thing which i want to ask i mean it may not be very relevant but uh, uh, what is your take on these alternative medicines especially in cases of uh, low amh like acupuncture or even uh, ayurvedic where they might be having uh, drugs which may help in improving the oocyte quality do you believe in uh, such uh, alternative therapies yeah yeah absolutely see uh, remember one thing any form of science which has lasted more than three generations no has some logic to it okay so one can't really tell anybody that ah this science doesn't work and that science is the only thing which works okay so out of all the things which you mentioned uh, there is a concept in ayurvedic medicine okay which works very well in patients with low amh okay and i think that is something to do with the oxidative things which they add inside the ovary so they have their own decoctions for it okay and and uh, it is not really it is not really a decoction which is you know which is always going to be uh, orally taken these are decoctions which are given in the form of uttar basti as well which would enhance the milieu for implantation in low amh so all of that really work in patients okay simultaneously uh, believe me you will have excellent outcomes of even homeopathic medicine in low amh okay though we always try to say that you know are nahi it's not a proven science and all these things there are people and there are there are guys who are doing excellent work in homeopathic medicine i so i think there is a concept in homeopathy and i'm i am not the best person obviously to speak on it but then there is a concept in homeopathy where they alter the hpo axis okay they can alter the hpo axis with some uh, five drug five time concentration of a particular drug okay so the least possible dose becomes the most potent dose okay and uh, that is something which a lot of my colleagues who practice exclusive homeopathy all of them are good friends with me because i end up being their uh, phone a friend okay and uh, and they get wonderful results so one must respect it is what i think okay so we'll take this uh, questions from the chat box quickly so clarify yeah. had xmg along with letrozole from the Same. first day yaar i mean trigger at clarity mm, yeah trigger at uh, 18 mm or uh, 20 mm anything between 18 and 21 is fine yeah uh, so chaman prash can it be given to female patients it can be given to kids also it's an antioxidant it's a fantastic thing yeah so do you mind sharing how many cycles of uh, ovulation yeah. induction iui and ivf are done in your practice every month i want people to have a good weekend okay so let's not get into these type of details but i can tell you uh, everything is in in the range of around 3 digits okay so uh who do you see? have you used tamoxifen in such cases in such patients i don't prefer to use tamoxifen in these cycles and we'll have a master class on it can we try this protocols in 0.02 amh i already said it will not really work if you want to try you can give a success rate of 2% okay do you use growth hormone in your practice no i can't afford it mm. if follicular cyst forms in previous cycle should we withhold uh, the next uh, do do e2 on the day of starting treatment if e2 is less than 50 you can aspirate the cyst and start the treatment yeah so do you believe in uh, giving ocipils if the e2 is more than 50 and giving a break and then starting the next cycle 
no just give a break cycle ocps will cause more damage to low amh patients mm-hmm. so in all low amh cases do you do dna fragmentation for the main yeah man no no i do dna fragmentation for almost all cases not just low amh cases we are a referral unit look people would have tried multiple oi and uh, ovulation induction cycles and then would have come to us so by the time they walk in they don't really hesitate to spend that extra money to do a dna fragmentation absolutely they don't yeah yeah so i think we have uh, uh, just one second there are six more messages so uh, hmg and uh, letros you stop after 7 days or you continue if there is suboptimal response one more day usually on the eighth day you will have fantastic response and uh, role of pre treatment antag in these cases not you are never going to need to do it when you want ui cycles because see remember one thing it's not going to happen that you will always have an asynchronous cohort one off occasion when you have an asynchronous cohort you might try no problem correct but routine indication should not be there for that okay if there is a patient with low amh 30 years with 3 cm endometrial cyst other ovary normal should uh, cyst excision be done or should it be left alone i think we can discuss this on whatsapp yeah that okay. question yeah how many patient has abnormal dfi oh quite a lot these days lots and lots of male partners you will have with an abnormal dfi huh so you are supposed to do a simultaneous correction for that as well yeah so in these uh, kind of cases where the amh is low have you had trouble building up their endometrium because oocyte quality is poor and as we know the endometrium depends on which the- is why which is why i said you give letrozole plus hmg as a combination so when you are recruiting three follicles one of them is going to be good which will take care of the endometrium mm-hmm. yeah but don't you think like you know because the follicular phase is short in these uh, women yeah you are giving this 150 hmg and letrozole so aren't uh, you stimulating it too much of uh, e2 where the implantation may not yeah that is the reason why i am adding letrozole with it so that persistently the e2 would stay around 200 300 range and you don't believe in uh, just uh, hmg protocol at all you add uh, letrozole all the just time? hmg protocol is something which will cause that little asynchrony because i might need antagonist madam you know if you add just hmg so the problem with that is e2 will start becoming 250 300 on the day 5 and then if it stays like that for three more days there will be premature lh surge mm-hmm. without an antagonist that is the reason why we have letrozole with it okay so uh, see here because the shorter follicular uh, phase is there you see that the follicle is around 15 16 mm on day 8 day 9 and you call them on day 10 and you see suddenly it has become like Say twenty twenty five mm, twenty six mm. Okay. Yeah, so, it, it happens. Uh, so how do you tackle it? I mean, do you trigger it early just because it is low AMH, yeah. or you just take that risk and say that it's? I mean, this is what you're going to do because ten percent of patients will end up like that. Yeah, that is going to happen again. I repeat, that is going to happen in these patients when you have monofollicular stimulation. Okay, mm-hmm. that rise. in e2 that sudden rise in e2 which wants to cause that lh surge causes that final imbalance which causes excessive granulomatous secretion of follicular fluid okay and which actually causes oocyte apoptosis in fact most of these types of cycles will end up developing a simple follicular cyst in the next cycle okay and you will have an empty empty follicle in that that cycle yeah so in your chart you mentioned in these uh, low amh patients you try max for four cycles and four cycles and if the amh is 0.2 you tell them the l- l- ivf is the best yeah and if the afc is uh, less than 2 you advise them dual and uh, yeah. you with the uh, xc i mean that is uh, the points yeah. for rep- not doing this cycle but to try and counsel them for uh, xc right yeah yeah i think yeah i think uh, uh, that's about it it was excellent as usual i think we you uh, Uh, drive. I, I think you gave very good points on uh, stimulation, especially in uh, older uh, age group women. Uh, I hope uh, everybody uh, 
looks at this and tries to replicate it and gives us a feedback as to what their experience will be with this uh, with these protocols and uh, with your practical experience so thank you very much thank you for doing it on a saturday for all of us though i think uh, it was uh, it was scheduled on thursday but uh, really it was on a weekend to come out and do it really thank you i thank dr padma priya who in spite of being so busy took out time to join for this very important session Thank you. Thank you, Deepesh sir. Thank you, Dr. Pratibha. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.